Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, host also of RT's talk show, Crosstalk. Well, um, we learned the other day that um, the Biden administration is uh, not actually withdrawing from uh, Iraq, it's just simply reclassifying its forces there. So in fact, they're not gonna be uh, combat troops, they're gonna be there in an advisory capacity. Um, but in the case of Syria, they're not even gonna bother with the advisory capacity. All American forces in Syria will stay put. So no uh, withdrawal uh, whatsoever is uh, envisaged from Syria. And that's in fact a corollary of the fact that they're staying, um, in, uh, staying on ad infinitum in, in Iraq, because of course, if they did withdraw from Iraq, then they would have to withdraw from Syria because there's no way they can sustain the forces there. Now, um, none of this is very surprising, but what was surprising was a, um, a, a fascinating article in uh, Politico uh, magazine, um, the thrust of which, I mean, if we can summarize the article, it's that uh, we need to uh, end forever wars by fighting forever wars. Um, the headline is troops to stay put in Syria, even as Biden seeks an end to America's forever wars. So they don't even think that there's anything strange about that headline. Um, and so, the, you know, he, the, the article, of course, repeats the canard that there are 900 US troops uh, in uh, Syria, even though we knew from uh, James Jeffords, the, um, uh, the Trump administration's point man in Syria, that that was just a lie put out to um, uh, befuddle Trump, that there were actually at least twice as many American troops there in any case. Um, and it puts out, of course, the, the usual line uh, that the Americans are there, to fight ISIS, they're fighting ISIS. You know, amazing, you know, fight ISIS. They're fighting ISIS in Iraq and they're fighting ISIS in Syria. All the time, they're just fighting ISIS. Um, and, uh, and apparently that's all they've been doing. So despite all that we have learned about every, that, how the Americans have been um, uh, seeking to uh, topple um, Bashar al-Assad, uh, that they've been, uh, you know, helping to uh, fund the uh, opposition fighters, including jihadis against Assad. No, 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 no. All they're doing is fighting ISIS. And you know, there's some really choice uh, ex ex uh, phrases here that uh, is worth taking a look at. Um, it says, uh, one senior admin administration official said, in Syria, we're supporting the Syrian Democratic Forces in their fight against ISIS. Uh, that's been quite successful, and that's something that will continue. And then, of course, the Politico reporter says, well, actually, in reality, no American troops have accompanied local forces on combat patrols for over a year, a year in either Iraq or in Syria. Um, so apparently, the, you know, since 2014, the aim has been to build the capacity of local forces to fight ISIS. Um, but of course, you know, even the political reporter kind of realizes there's something kind of absurd. You're saying you're fighting ISIS. You're, you're not actually doing any fighting. Um, so uh, they said that there has to be some other reason why they're saying in Syria. And, uh, and then he says that, well, um, there are broad ramifications in Syria far beyond the ISIS fight. Most critically, providing a check on Russian and Iranian interests. The presence of US troops prevents the Russian-backed Syrian government from accessing the oil fields and agricultural resources of northeastern Syria and serves to obstruct Iran's goal to establish a geographic uh, corridor connecting Tehran with Lebanon and the Mediterranean. Um, All of it is garbage. Oh, absolutely. Um, so here then is the, the nub. Um, we are going to pretend that we want to end forever wars. Um, that's the operative word, pretend, be, because we, we're gonna fight for forever wars. And then we're gonna keep inventing new uh, rationales. So we come up with the story that we're fighting ISIS. You know, even, even reporters at Political kind of wonder, well, what the hell are you doing? You haven't done any fighting for, for over a year. So why do we need forces there? Uh, ah, got it. We have to thwart Russia and Iran. And of course, 
needless to say, Russia and Iran are there legally at the invitation of the sovereign government, the United States is not there. To, yeah. to, to fight ISIS. Fight ISIS. And they seize the oil fields. Hey, oil fields, we'll have those. Wheat fields, we'll have those. Um, we must end these forever wars. No one wants forever wars. It's, it's just exasperating. Peter, what do you think? Well, I mean, the author of that has no self-respect because the article doesn't make any sense, no. okay? So um, America is there illegally. He, he didn't mention that. He, he said intervention. Of course, it's, he doesn't mention okay. that. As, no if, one ever as, as if it's, ban it's banal, okay? All right? But it, it, it is an illegal intervention. And we're not invited there. Number two, that's what the Damascus government is doing is fighting ISIS exactly. and the people exactly. that they're talking that this ridiculous, no lacking any kind of self-respect author of this article is that he should have said Kurds. Okay. That's and 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 during all of this international proxy war being fought in Syria, is that the Kurds and the Damascus government have really had no beef whatsoever. Okay. Now the, what this is, is it gives the Kurds this ridiculous hope that they somehow with the, with, with the, um, uh, um, uh, this, the possibility may arise that they may be able to get some kind of statelet um, position. But if you look at the Damascus government through the good services of the Russians, by the way, have worked on internal reforms in Syria that would give Kurds a lot more autonomy. See, it's the US continued presence that doesn't allow a resolution, okay? And and, and some of the groups that, are in, that the US is supporting are terrorist groups. Now, the way the sleight of hand where, um, where um, Syria's oil and wheat fields are, well, I mean, you're not allowing the country to rebuild, okay? And essentially all of the people he talked to you know, anonymous sources, uh, Pentagon official, blah, blah. They're, it's a, they're there without a mission. They're looking for a mission. So they're just staying there until they can find a, a mission. Oh, 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 connecting Iran to Lebanon. Uh, did this, uh, does this writer know that, that Iran has airplanes and, and, uh, and Lebanon has airports? And they can fly planes there. This every time you keep hearing this, this you know, this um, a crescent, you know, this a cre crescent of terrorism. It's all, it's all BS. It doesn't make any sense at all. They always say the Israelis say it, the Pentagon always says it. It's, it's a myth. It's one of those long-standing myths here. So I don't know. The, 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 people like this to write these kind of articles should be so deeply ashamed of themselves because they're described for empire. Right. I mean, it was a, it was an awful article. Well, I think, look, I think Iran clearly does have a major interest. I mean, Iran's um, alliance with Syria and with the- uh, It's their the neighborhood. And with the, exactly, it's, and with the Shia in Lebanon, uh, with Hezbollah. I mean, that's a, that is a, a crucial <laughs> existential matter for Iran, that if Iran is in any conflict, it, it will need these are allies. These are crucial allies for uh, Iran. Um, so, uh, so, but that's, that is, as you said, that is their neighborhood and that is a, an, an important matter for Iran, Iranian security. Um, but Iran is the one that is fighting ISIS. I mean, if you want to, who, who is the major opponent for Soleimani. Sunni, Sunni uh, jihadi uh, extremism, it has always been Iran. Um, alongside the Syrians and the Russians. So it is b this bizarre notion that the Americans are, we have to fight ISIS by bashing Iran and Bashar al-Assad. That makes no sense. I mean, I mean, you know, that's, you know, I mean, this whole idea, you know, they're always using this analogy, the, the, the Hitler-Stalin analogy. Oh, well, you know, we're, we're aligning ourselves with one against the, another. No, you're actually bashing. I mean, it was like saying, well, we're fighting Hitler by bashing the Soviet Union. That's the logic of this. It's not, it's not the, the usual kind of thing. So, you know, we have to align ourselves with bad guys, just as we did with Stalin. No, you're actually fighting the other side. The more you attack Iran, the more you attack uh, Bashar al-Assad's forces, you're weakening them and strengthening ISIS, which could be a good, a good reason why ISIS just simply never dies. <laughs> year after year goes on, and we're still fighting ISIS. 
Well, isn't it interesting, George? It's always the excuse to stay somewhere. Right, exactly. But everybody, but everybody, there was no ISIS in Iraq before the illegal right. invasion in 2003. There was no ISIS in Syria right. until there was the illegal overthrow of the Iraqi government. There was no ISIS anywhere. Right. They, the illegal invasion of Iraq created the possibilities for a, for a caliphate. And I never missed the opportunity, everyone. In, in September to, uh, 2015, Vladimir Putin went to the General Assembly of the United Nations and said he, Russia has accepted a invitation of assistance from the government in Damascus. And then miraculously, you know, no one remembers this, no one reports in the media, 25 planes in six weeks, the caliphate was destroyed. Donald Trump likes to take credit for it, fine with me, the caliphate was destroyed, okay? So any of the, any rationale that they have to stay there doesn't make any logical sense, except for maybe they want ISIS to exist. Well, of course they, they want ISIS to exist. I mean, it's there as the, the rationale for them uh, to continue uh, their presence. It's, it's the only justification for uh, being in Syria and um, uh, being in Iraq. And the, uh, this, what, you're, what you said is right. What they're doing now is trying to create this Kurdish statelet. And of course they're using this Kurdish statelet um, as a way of uh, exerting power against Turkey because it, it kind of antagonizes Turkey um, and against um, Assad. So it basically, it's, it's a, it guarantees that Syria can never be reconstructed as a single state. I mean, you know, apart from anything else, you know, you've got Idlib, which again, the United States continually sanctioning any, uh, any attempt uh, to uh, take over Idlib. So you got Idlib, then you got the Kurds. And so you maintain this country will be divided and uh, impoverished and uh, you know, uh, you know <laughs> destroyed forever. Only today, it, 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 the State it, it, Department it, it, issued more sanctions. You know, more and sanctions how does that, in Syria. How does that? How does that further American foreign policy interests? No, does not. Does does it does, does not do so. But uh, but it is this is you know you, you come along and say forever wars, and you get these. Um, sycophants, the sycophants in the media who repeat, oh, the Biden administration wants to end the forever wars, but it's very difficult, God, it's such a terrible vexing problem, you know, you get a headache even thinking about it, it's hard to end these forever wars, but of course it is, if you don't want to end them, then you're, never, you're not going to end them, <laughs> that's, that's the way it's going to go, so I've been there now seven years, been in Iraq, this is it's getting on for 20 years 2003 and you know afghanistan that's not coming to an end either so you know we just go on and we can go on saying we want to end the forever wars well i have I, I, anyone watching this here if you want a um a um uh, a illustrious career over at politico write bullshit like that and you will get what equivalent to tenure okay it yes. is absolutely shameless this kind of propaganda. And you're right, it's gotta be one of the most um, uh, bizarre Hack9 titles I've ever come across in one title, <laughs> wanting to end wars, <laughs> stay in, Syri uh, in Syria. I mean, I mean, I, uh, what's the IQ of the, of the editor that let that go through? I mean, that's just extraordinary. Right. But it, it shows a mindset here. And uh, we don't, we have no idea if, if uh, uh, well, essentially, they suggest in the article that Biden really doesn't care. He's got bigger fish to fry. Okay, which I don't believe that for a second. Okay, because no, this is a a, a, a nice cutout for for people in the Pentagon and and to keep it keep fueling it. Okay, they lost the for now their gig in Afghanistan, but we still got this little um, micro gig going on in northern Syria. And yeah, but, really, I, think, yeah, but you, I think that you know their calculation. I think, and that's been a calculation for a long time is we're just going to raise the cost to Russia. So we're not actually going to uh, do anything productive or creative in Syria. We're not going to help anybody there. We're just going to raise the cost for them to in, uh, uh, increase the pain Russia suffers, increase the pain Syria suffers, increase the pain Iran suffers. And that is somehow a victory. And I think that's all their calculation is. I mean, and it's been that once they fail to topple Assad, then they said, okay, then, you know, you know, it's like you can't play the game, so you're just going to pre prevent anyone else 
from being uh, playing anything. I mean, it, it's well, that childish. It, it gives it gives the brass at the Pentagon um, extra time to think about critical race theory. Yes, you know. Does. Yes, it does. Yes, they, got, it does. they got that marker covered in, in northern Syria. Let's talk about white rage in the military. Okay. That's that's right. Yeah. All, right, All right, everybody. We're, we're on local, so please go to thegaggle.locals.com. Um, uh, we're building a really interesting community, a lot of fun. Uh, lots of different little items coming out. George is a, a, a real um, a film fanatic, so he's got his film reviews there. Kira does a lot of art. I need to get uh, get to work on my little um, garden to, to attend here. Also, we're doing Zoom calls with gagglers, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and, it's come, and we're doing it on a regular basis. Uh, the Gaggle store is up and running. And uh, George did his debut uh, live stream. Live a little stream short. Again. There's another one tomorrow. Short. Doing tomorrow, and it's another one tomorrow. You know, we, because under this new regimen, we get now an hour, so we'll be able to develop some ideas and get a good, you know, live streaming and um, dialogue going. So that should. Be and I'll follow in George's footsteps next week. And there's always one thing I forget, George. There is something called the tip jar, which is dangerously empty. You know, there's, you know, there's only you know, a couple of chronically <laughs> empty, a couple of coins tingling around, and um, I know Buddy doesn't like it. He likes it full. You know, he likes it when it makes a dull, dull sound when it's you know full. You know, they doesn't like it rattling around. So, uh, any help that you can provide us will be um, most appreciated because we don't have billionaires um, uh, looking after us. Uh, so we, we we live off the kindness of strangers. Um, so. Remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.